Hello there, this is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I apologize for the short hiatus, but I am back and I have a card video for you, so get comfy and let's get crafty. I am going to create a Father's Day card using my Cricut Design Space. So I've opened a blank canvas on my computer screen and I am selecting a shape. I'm going to start with this rounded corner square and then I will come to the toolbar and unlock it so that I can change the dimensions. I want this to be four inches wide by five and one quarter inches tall. And this will create my card panel. I'm going to use this color changing option and change this to a brown color because I will be cutting this out of craft card stock. And that is just to keep my mind straight when I go to cut the layers. The next thing I'm going to do is add this star. I'm sure there's lots of stars in the image gallery as well, but this one works just fine for me. I am going to drag that to the top of my card panel and resize it. And then I will right click it and click copy and then click my mat and click paste two times. I want to have three stars on this card. I am going to resize the second and third stars so that I have kind of a large, medium and small effect going on here. And I also will recolor these stars with the color option little thing in the toolbar again. And that is just for my benefit when it comes time to put the paper on my mat so that I know which, what I am cutting with what color, right? Or in what color. The next thing I want to do is add the word dad to my card front. But for some reason in design space, text was not working. I don't know what the issue with that is. So I just went to the image gallery and typed in the word dad and scrolled down until I found one that met my needs and voila, second row of characters. There's a dad right there on the left that is perfect. You know, just quick and simple dad. I will go ahead and add that to my canvas and use the corner on the right bottom to shrink that down so that I can pull it to the top of my card panel. And now I just need to make sure that's the size I want. I'm comfortable with that size. And then I need to kind of reorganize or realign how I want to put my stars on this card. And again, they're not going to cut this way. This is just for visual reference so that I can make sure everything is the size that I want it to be. So now I have clicked the make it button on my computer and I've chosen the on mat section. But before I go to cut it, I want to arrange all of the colors of cardstock on my mat so that I can just cut them all at one time. So what's going to happen is I have moved the craft to the right top corner and I'm moving my stars down to the below the six inch mark. And when I load the cardstock onto my mat, that is how I'm going to put the cardstock on. And that way I don't have to, I can take everything off at one time. So I have changed my, my paper setting to a heavy duty cardstock and I'm ready to put the cardstock on my mat. So here is my card front and this is a four and a half by five and a quarter. Um, four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of paper. So basically it's just going to be rounding the edges, which I could have done with a paper round or corner rounder, but whatever. Um, and as I am ready to put my green and red cardstock on the mat, I'm realizing that that's looking a little bit Christmassy. So instead of red, I will be using blue to cut the word dad. And then I will still use the green to cut the word stars. And because I have loaded or added the paper to the mat this way and edited my mat so that the images are in are not always in the top left corner. All I have to do is unload and load each time. So I will push the load button and kind of hold my mat into place so that the roller bars can grab that. And then I will push the cut button and I will zoom through the cutting of the cardstock because you probably don't really want to see that in real time. So the first thing we're going to cut is the word dad. Um, I could have even made this a little faster it looks like, <laughs> but it's just kind of cutting right at the top of the paper. Um, a little bit nervous but it, it worked out so no worries and then I will push the unload and reload again so that it can cut the corners on my craft card stock and each time I am having to push the the load and unload button and then the cut button the little C button but it's still easier than having to have three different mats loaded or having to take the image off and put the paper in cardstock back on the paper. It just saves me a little bit of time. Right now we're ready to go ahead and cut those stars and it's just kind of deciding where it needs to be. And then I'm pressing the cut button and we are going to zoom through the cutting of the stars as well. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So I did not speed up that part. This is a real time cut. 
So on a simple image like um, stars, this is how fast the Cricut machine would cut those three stars out. So you got a little bit of real time in there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and unload that paper, um, the mat. And now I have all of my images cut out and on my desk ready to work on. I want to kind of grunge this up a little bit because it is a masculine card and a little bit of dirt doesn't hurt, right? Not with boys. <laughs> um, I am going to use some archival ink. This is potting soil to add a little bit of texture or ink around the edges of the card. It also creates a little bit of a frame idea, it pulls your eyes to the center of the card. And the first thing I want to do is, I well, I put one star on and then realized probably I need to put the dad on first. So gratefully I hadn't pulled out my glue yet, but I am going to stick the dad word on first and I will be using my reverse tweezers and liquid glue to do that. Once I got the, the word on, I realized that the front of the card was just a little bit too, I don't know, clean, precious. I don't know what the word is. It, it just needed a little something, something. It was a little too plain, we'll call it plain. So once I got that word glued on, I went into my stamp collection and found this textured stamp set. Sorry if you can hear the lawnmower, husband's busy working today. <laughs> and I am going to add some texture to the background of this card with that same potting soil archival ink. I am going to throw a piece of scrap paper underneath it um, just so that I can stamp off and kind of go outside the boundary of the paper. And once I have used all of the ink on the stamp, I am going to go ahead and just even stamp over the dad word cutout just to kind of um, blend it in a little bit, make it look like it fits. All right, now that my stamping is complete and all put away, I can go ahead and add the stars to the front of my card. And the largest one I contemplated sticking it kind of upside down, but I don't know, an upside down star kind of looks weird. I don't know, in my brain it doesn't work very well. I just kind of went ahead with that one straight up and down. I did put the second one just a little bit to askew off to the kind of kitty corner a little bit. And same with the bottom one. And I guess kitty corner is okay, but upside down is not. <laughs> um, I am going to use this tailored expression stamp set to stamp out Happy Father's Day, which I edited out because I forgot to um, zoom out so you could see what I was doing. I am going to go ahead and trim that down with my paper trimmer. And then I want to back it with some scrap cardstock. So I'm either going to use the blue or the green, and I had not yet decided which color I wanted to use. This is really fidgety. Um, my fingers were sticky, but not sticky enough. It was kind of weird. I don't know. And also, it's been a minute since I made this card, because obviously it was for Father's Day, and I did not get it up before Father's Day so you could see it. But this could be a birthday card. It could be an anything card. It could be an I love you, Dad card. I did decide to go with the blue cardstock as the layer behind the sentiment. I felt like the green would blend it in with the stars just a little bit too much. And I'm going to just add a little bit of a tiny border to this, and then I will trim that out with my Fiskars trimmer again. I did finally get some new blades for that, um, which I am, I, you know, I go back and forth because I, I like my guillotine trimmer. It cuts cardstock like a champ and I don't ever have to replace the blade on it, but I'm not really good with it for fine, like little tiny lines and detail trimming. So I do like that this Fiskars trimmer has that wire in it so I can see exactly where I'm going to be cutting. It has the lines that are both vertical and horizontal so I don't have to be down at the bottom guide, especially when I'm super zoomed in and you can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so where to put the sub sentiment on this card? Um, I decided I did not like that star there, so I'm going to pull that up as carefully as I can. I know it's going to kind of scuff the bottom of the card a little bit, that card panel, but I'm not super concerned because I'm going to cover it up. So one thing I have not used on cards in ages and ages is Baker's Twine, and I have a whole drawer full, full of it. So I pulled out this um, it's like a brown and white Baker's Twine from Stampin' Up! It's like a gazillion years old. It's probably like their um, early espresso or chocolate chip or one of their dark browns. I don't know. And I'm just going to cut off a length. Um, I will go ahead and tape the tail back down before I cut it off because then I have control over where that lands, at least in my brain, right? <laughs> I am going to go ahead and cut that off and wrap the cardstock around the bottom of the card. 
Well, back in the day when I was using twine on everything, I did learn a little trick. And that was to tape the end of the twine down and it kept sticking to the, my fingers and the tape. It was being ridiculous. But tape the bottom of, or the end of the twine down and then wrap it. Because that way I'm not trying to hold it down and wrap it all at the same time. I am not trying to do anything particularly fabulous here. I'm just going across and instead of making straight lines, I'm zigzagging across each other, kind of making X's. All right, so now that I have my baker's twine on there, I can go ahead and put the Father's Day sentiment back down. I did decide to go ahead and glue that down flat to the card panel and then pop up the star, the third star that I had left. So I'm going to add just a little bit of Tombow Mono glue to the back of this sentiment strip and add it just below my baker's twine, kind of eyeball centered in the middle of that card panel. And then I'm going to pull out some little um, foam squares that I purchased at the dollar store, sorry, the dollar 25 store, <laughs> and put some foam on the back of the star to pop it up. It will not sit flat on top of that baker's twine anyway, so why not add a little more dimension? I'm going to cut some of the squares into little slivers so that I can add them down the edges of the star. And no, I did not make you watch all of that tedious work. I have peeled the backing off all of those foam squares and the star is ready to go on. Now all we have left is the assembly. I have a piece of eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11. And I will score that at five and a half inches. This makes it a top folding portrait style card, my favorite. You probably get tired of hearing me tell you that. But I felt like in my early card making days, I liked hearing the dimensions of what people were creating. Um, it helped me um, picture in my mind and also learn how to create a card. So this will be a five and a half by four and a quarter inch card. It is a top folding portrait style card. And I am going to add the card base, which is four inches by five and a quarter inches onto my card base with foam tape. So card panel to card base with foam tape. And I am using my big, huge mama roll of 3M foam tape that I've purchased off Amazon. I usually get one about every 12 months or so, depending on how many dimensional cards I'm making. In fact, I have one sent to come and be delivered this week because I'm nearly out. Um, and then I need to center my card panel onto my card base. However, because the corners are rounded, it's going to be a little bit more obvious if I'm not, if I'm off. So I turned it sideways because then I can see three of the four sides at least to line it up and I feel like that looks just right. I will go ahead and add a piece of white copy paper to the inside of my card. I buy a 24 pound copy paper for this so that you can have a clean space to write on but you can't really see through it like you can a thinner copy paper. And now my card is ready. This is the card I created for my children to give to their father for Father's Day. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down. Let me know what you liked about it. I have added a couple other videos here for you to watch and a subscribe button. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you did. Um, I love hearing your comments. So if you have something to say, go ahead and put it down below in the comment section. Do me a favor, have a really fabulous day.